Hi, my name's Robin Windsor from Strictly Come Dancing and you're watching Entertainment Focus. How are you today, Robin? I'm very good. Yeah, how are you? Good, thank you. You were saying before you've just been away for the weekend. What have you been up to? Uh, just been to Paris for the weekend. A friend of mine, just a quick weekend break, just to get away. Um, a bit of peace and quiet. Is the weather better than here? It was really hot, beautiful. So this is quite a good thing? Yeah, it's nice to come back. It's a bit cool today. So tell us, what have you been up to since Strictly finished at Christmas? Well, since the last series of Strictly, um, obviously me and Patsy, we actually did the tour together, which was great fun. That actually really let her hair down and really, there's, there's no competition during the tour as such. So um, she was much more relaxed and she had a great time and we got on really well together. And um, that took us through till February. And um, since then, it's been me and Christina have put a show together, a five dance show that we've been taking around the country doing a few, few charity gigs and a few personal um, shows. So how's that been going? What's the reception been like post Strictly? Since Strictly, everything's kind of taken off. Everyone's really aware of you now, and uh, it's in a way it's really exciting, but it's also a little bit strange. Everybody knowing exactly what you're doing. But uh, the reception with our shows has been amazing. Our first one was at the Blackpool Tower, so it was great to go back there again because we were doing the show there with Strictly. Um, so we had a great reception, and it was nice to be performing like just us as well, not having to drag your dance partner around the floor or anything. It was like me and Christina getting to showcase everything that we do. And have you got any more shows coming up with Christina? Yeah, we've got another four coming up, um, all in July. Actually, they're all in the first week of July. Uh, one in Aberdeen, uh, one in Edinburgh, one in Sheffield, and off the top of my head, I can't remember where the other one is. <laughs> but I'm um, sure there's it on Facebook or something somewhere for people to find out the dates. Everything will be on Christina's website, which is officialchristinarianoff.com. My website is still underway, so that will be done very shortly. But the, the best show we've done so far was in Ipswich. I got to go back to my hometown, and everybody was there from when I was growing up, from all the dance schools that I used to go to, my family, my friends. It was just an amazing experience. They just went crazy. So how did you and Christina come to start dancing together? Um, we didn't know each other before Strictly had started and it was uh, the producers at Strictly who thought okay we think these two will make a great partnership and from day one we clicked and we've become like best friends more than, more than anything and um, our dance styles suit each other so well and we were very popular on the show as a, as a professional couple. So you were pleased then when you were paired with her, you didn't wish you'd been with anybody else? Or? No, I actually, because I know Natalie Lowe for many years um, through Burn the Floor, which is the show that I used to do, I'd already said to Natalie, I said, because uh, Natalie said she'd like to dance with me, but I'm just a little bit too short for her. So I said, I'd really like to dance with Christina. And as luck would have it, they put me with her. And yeah, Natalie's pretty tall, isn't she? Yeah, she's just a bit too tall for me. I think she's about 5'11", um, and I'm 5'10", so when she's got her heels on, she's just, she's just too tall for me, which is unfortunate. So what's life been like for you since Strictly? You said before that things have kind of rocketed. It's what, what is that in terms of recognition and people coming to you for things? Or yeah, it's been great. Um, have going out and people actually come up to you, and it's nice to be appreciated because people basically most of the time they're coming up to say how good a job you did on Strictly, and we can't wait to see you again. And it, it's nice to get that recognition for for all the hard work that you put in. So tell us a bit about Strictly. You're one of the new boys last year. What was the whole experience like for you? I've got to say, it was probably the most daunting experience of my entire life. That first launch show that we had, where we all found out our dance partners, I had butterflies in my stomach. They were eating me up, and it was so painful, and I was shaking. Um, because at the end of the day, we were replacing some very popular people that were on the show, and we had a lot to prove. And I felt like everything, everybody was looking in on me, expecting me to do a fantastic job. And judging by how things went, I think it went all right. So were you a bit gutted that Art and Pipped you to the top? No, we're, we're the best of friends. He's my housemate and um, we're, we're like brothers. We get on so well together and I was there rooting for him all the way, screaming our heads off in the final and I, I was there to support him and Cara the, the whole way through. So what would you say is one of your favourite moments from being on Strictly last year? Ooh, I don't know, it's really difficult just to pick one favourite moment but for me, I think actually dancing with Christina to Neil Diamond was was one of my favourite things because that, I think that was my mum's most proudest moment and if I made my mum proud then it made me proud. 
So I saw a lot of your tweets when you were doing the Strictly tour after the show, and it sounds like you and Ricky Whittle had quite a lot to drink on many nights. Oh, uh, <laughs> Ricky Whittle is is a legend. We struck up a friendship right from the very beginning, and uh, he took me under his wing, and just we just had a great time together. And yeah, there was a lot of drinking involved, but it it was it was just a lot of fun, and it, the the tour is an opportunity to kind of let your hair down a little bit. Has your liver recovered? Oh yes. <laughs> Just. Do you think it's stronger now? <laughs> I, I think it's been put through its paces enough. So obviously Strictly's coming around again this year. Um, do you know if you're going to be involved in that yet? We're all to find out very soon whether we'll be part of the next series. Fingers crossed that I am because it, for me it was the most magical experience that I've ever had. Of course it's a lot of hard work. It's a, much strenuous job than I thought it was going to be. I thought, oh, teaching, just teaching someone to dance every week, a new dance and put it on TV. It can't be that difficult, but it's the hardest job I've ever had. However, I would do it again in an instant. And having had the experience with Patsy, is there anything that you would do differently as a teacher this time around? It's been great, actually, having that first year to learn. Um, the best time for me to have learned anything um, from Strictly was actually on the tour. There you get the chance to change things every night and because you're doing the same dances day in, day out, uh, a, a way to improve and especially talking to, in some cases it was 14,000 people, so you, you're improving every day and changing and growing and I think that's where I learned most of my experience so hopefully now I can bring that all onto the next series. And are you proud of how Patsy performed over the course of the series? Patsy was the we all say, oh, there's the cliché, the journey that everybody goes on. But for Patsy, it wasn't a cliché, it was a journey. She started this very um, unconfident woman um, who, she, she had gained a little bit of weight. She was quite accepting of that. She'd come out of her fourth marriage. Um, she was quite fragile and she needed this confidence boost to pick her up and, and push her forward. And week by week, she actually got better. Her confidence grew, um, she became a better dancer, she became a, a much more confident woman and she was so happy with the results. And I was really happy because I could see her improving. And we've become like a, a counsellor at the same time because it's quite a pressure for these celebrities to be able to learn a dance and do it in front of 12 million people every single week. So, so were you proud at the end of it? Because as you say, Patsy did go through quite a journey. She was a very different person at the start than she was at the end, and she was getting great comments from the judges by the end of it. So are you proud of your role in that? Everything that Patsy did was a reflection on me. Um, everything that I taught her, everything that I've been drumming into her week after week um, started to sink in, and as it came out, it showed that I was a good teacher and not only a good teacher but a good friend because she trusted me in everything that I was doing for her and the moment that trust has gone is, is when it's all over but that trust was there for us because we had such a good friendship at the same time. So having had somebody like Patsy as a partner, if you do end up in the next series of Strictly, are you worried about getting Anne Whittacombe kind of character? Oh, it's a tough one, I mean we never can tell who we're going to get but you make the most of the person that you have and if I'd have had Anne Widdicombe, I would have gone down a completely different route. If I'd have had Cara, I would have gone down a completely different road of teaching and my methods and everything. It just depends on what kind of person you have and, and how you can deal with them. Would you have been able to drag Anne around the floor as well as Anton? Uh, I would have had Anne up on my shoulders and spinning around, so beware whoever I get next year. Um, so what are you hoping this year, if you do get Strictly, is there anything that you would like to do different or are you just looking forward to potentially having that experience again? Basically just to have the experience again will be amazing but obviously I want to improve on what I did last year, I've made it to week 9 and of course we're all competitors, we, we want to win, it's, it's in our bloods ever since we were born, we've had this drive, we want to win but ultimately it's getting your celebrity to be the best that they can it, whether it means they go out in the first week or they win, as long as I've done as much as I can with them to make them be the best that they possibly can, then I'll be very happy. And who would be your ideal celebrity partner if you could choose anybody? Who would it be? Oh, if I could have anybody, I get this cast this question all the time, and I think Joanna Lumley would be fantastic on Strictly, and Dawn French. Um, Dawn French actually came to watch the show while we were, uh, I think, about week, week seven or week eight. 
and you could tell that she was loving it and I think she'd actually be really funny and she'd, she'd make a great addition to the show. Yeah, Joanna the Moo would be very classy, wouldn't she? In the big, in the gowns and... Well, I think there's also another side to her. I reckon that she could come out and she could be a bit of a wild card there. So how did you cope with Strictly when it turned you into a bit of a pin-up? Because when I get tweeted at, which I do a lot about Strictly Come Dancing, because we covered it a lot last year, um, and the two people I hear about more than anything is you and Artem. I mean, how's that to be now this pin-up for, for these girls? And uh, I never really saw myself as a pin-up until uh, myself and Artem did the naked photo shoot centrefold for Cosmopolitan. Uh, I was receiving some really bizarre comments and things, stuff that I probably shouldn't mention. Um, but I just take everything in my stride. I just, I, I'm there to do a job and there's obviously a lot that comes with it, but I, I'm there to have a good time and do what I love. Because I remember when we talked to you before the show started when you were in training, and one of the things that stuck in my mind that you said is that you're considered to be a bit of rough and you don't fit the normal Strictly mould. So to come out the other side as one of the, you know, the top two pin-ups must be quite weird. Well, it's, it's a little unusual. I, I don't obviously don't look like a typical ballroom dancer with quite a big build, the, the goatee and the, the shaved head, but I've somehow managed to fit into that strictly thing without having to be a typical ballroom dancer. So I'm quite, I feel quite privileged that they've, everybody's accepted me the way that I am. And I could be a little bit more tough and rough, but they're, they're, they're gonna have to wait to see that in the next series. Well, I won't share with you some of the comments that we had <laughs> via Twitter, uh, not, for, uh, not for a family audience, <laughs> say that. So what else have you got coming up in 2011? Potentially strictly some more dates with Christina, what else have you got coming up? That's really it at the moment. I'm teaching at a gym, um, or I will be very shortly. It's called Lomax, it's in St James's Park. Um, I've been having a personal train, personal, ooh, I've been having a personal trainer there. Um, He's been really good and he's been trying to get my body fit again, ready for the next series because when you're not dancing so much, when Strictly's not on, you do kind of lose your um, consistency with your, uh, what's it called? Uh, I'm going to ask kind you of that. like the routine, is it? Uh, I can't think of the words. Um, <laughs> when you want stamina, <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, my personal trainer has been helping me a lot with my stamina and obviously get my body into shape again ready for Strictly because when you're not dancing so often, you tend to eat a lot more and the weight comes on pretty quickly. You don't look that out of shape. Oh, I'm getting there slowly. 